Hello students, I'm Rinchen Norbu. I teach in Ghoom Girls High Secondary School. The second chapter has been completed. That was on demand, right? So today we'll do the third chapter, that is the concept of elasticity. Okay, now before we go to the third chapter, I'd like to explain or just do a quick recapitulation of some of the basic points of the second chapter that would be helpful for us to understand the third chapter better, okay? Now, in the second chapter, we had studied about demand, right? Demand, and we also studied that demand depends upon certain factors. We had studied the determinants of demand, all right, or the factors affecting demand. And so just to sum a few of it, it was price of the commodity itself, of the commodity itself, all right? Then the next one was price of related commodities, then we had income, right? And then we had habits and tastes. So these are a few that I'm naming right now, etc. okay? So in the second chapter, when we do a quick recap, since it's important for us to understand the third chapter, we are done that demand depends upon a certain factors. These are the determinants of demand, all right? Now, though, therefore, demand becomes what? Demand is a dependent variable since it depends on these factors, and all these other factors are what? Are independent variables. Okay, now, so we can understand very clearly that say X be the demand depends upon say Y. So these Y is all these other factors. So X being demand, we can write it algebraically, F means what? Depends upon and why are these, are the, these are the factors on which demand depends upon, okay? So the reason why I'm doing a quick recap of this is because it'll help you understand the third chapter better, okay? So we said that demand depends on all these factors, and it is very clear to us that demand depends upon these factors, okay? Now, we had also said that whenever demand, uh, whenever price increases, demand for the commodity decreases, right? So whenever there is an increase in income of the consumer, then what happens? Demand, specifically speaking, demand for normal goods increases with an increase in demand, right? But now, it was not clear. It was clear that there would be a change in demand when these factors change. But the degree of change, okay, the responsiveness of change of demand due to the change of these factors is dealt in this chapter concept of elasticity, okay? So what is the concept of elasticity? The elasticity of demand helps us understand the degree of responsiveness or the uh, change of demand. How much will demand change? In simple words, how much will demand change when there is a change in any of these factors, all right? So say, for example, if price changes by 10 rupees, then how much will demand change? Say demand for any commodity, say potatoes for instance. Will the demand for potatoes increase by one kg? Will it increase by two kgs or three kgs? Or what will happen? Or will the demand decrease? All right, so this is a very relative term because whenever there is a change in price, the change in of commodity, the change in demand for each commodity will be different. It will not be the same for all the commodities. Similarly, when there is a change in price of any commodity, then there also be a change in demand for different consumers differently. We all are different individuals, right? So our change in demand will not be the same. So let me conclude whatever I've explained right now. The chapter concept of elasticity helps us understand the responsiveness, all right? The responsiveness of demand due to the change in these factors. All right? Or we can simply say that the concept of elasticity will help us understand how much the rate of change of demand due to the rate of change in the independent variables. All right? So we can therefore write the function of elasticity of demand can be written as, so I'm writing this signal for elasticity, okay? So elasticity of DD, I'm using short forms. Elasticity of demand can be written as percentage change in quantity, DD means demanded, due to percentage change in the independent variables, okay? So now, so therefore, what is elasticity of demand? Elasticity of demand 
mathematically speaking, is the percentage change in quantity demanded due to the percentage change in the independent variable. Any one of the independent variable, all other variables remaining constant, okay? Now, since we know that these independent variables, which I just discussed, could be price, could be the income of the consumer, could be price of related commodities, right? So there'll be different elasticities of demand depending upon which variable we choose, which independent variable we choose, okay? So elasticity of demand, the broad definition must be clear to you. That is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in independent variable. So let's go on with the first variable that is the income of the consumer. So that is dealt in income, elasticity of demand, okay? Now income elasticity of demand means whenever there is a change in income of a consumer, how much will be the change in the quantity demanded, all right? So we can therefore say that income elasticity of demand is what? Is uh, the amount of change in demand or the percentage change in quantity demanded due to 1% change in the income of the consumer, other things remaining constant, all right? Now so for income elasticity of demand, say for example, X is the commodity, and M, we write it as what? Money income. So the term should be clear. M is money income, and X is the demand of the commodity, okay? Now, for income elasticity, the, that definition which I just showed to you right now, which I just erased it, was what? Percentage, I'm just using delta for change. Percentage change in quantity demanded of X divided by percentage change in the money income. Okay, so I'm just writing it by M, money income of the consumer. Now, what is this? Percentage change in quantity demanded can be represented algebraically as delta X. Delta means what? Change. And this X is your initial quantity that you demanded before the change. So delta X is your change in quantity demanded, and X is your initial quantity that you demanded before the change in the income, okay? Multiply it by 100. Since we are taking out percentage, so you have to multiply it by 100, okay? And the next one we write it as percentage change in money income. We can write it as delta M, where this is the change in income. What is your new income minus your old income? Minus M, which is your initial income or your old income before the change. And since we are taking out percentage, we'll write it multiplied by 100. So let's simplify this equation further. So that becomes delta X divided by X 100, 100 will just uh, cancel out, right? Divided by delta M divided by M, okay? We further simplify, simplify it. Delta X divided by X multiplied by M divided by delta M, which we further putting delta delta on one side. Delta X divided by delta M is equal to M divided by X. So is that clear? So we have come here. I hope this is clear to you. This is a little bit mathematical. Delta X is the change in your what? Uh, change in your demand. That is your new demand minus your old demand divided by X. That is your old demand before the change. Multiplied by 100 since you're taking out percentage. The whole thing divided by this. That is your delta M. That is a change in your income. New income minus your old income divided by M, which is your initial income or your old income multiplied by 100. So when we simplify it further, this you have done in junior classes also, simple maths, delta M divided by X, 100, 100 cancels out, divided by delta M by M, and then you get delta X by X multiplied by, the numerator goes up, you know, M multiplied by X, M. So we put delta on one side, delta X divided by delta M, which is equal to M by X, all right? So, so far it must be clear, and I think it is clear to you. Now this M, what is this? This is your money income. And this X, that is your demand. So these two things can never be negative, right? It's always positive. So your income elasticity, your sign of income elasticity depends upon these two variables, delta X and delta M, okay? Now, your income elasticity depends on, what did I say? These two variables, okay? Your income elasticity can either be positive, it can be negative, it can be one greater than, sorry, it can be one greater than one, less than one, or zero, okay? So now let's take uh, the case of, uh, 
Say, for example, let's take the case for normal goods. Now, what happens in case of normal goods? Whenever there is an increase in income of a person, then what happens? The demand for normal goods will increase. So in that case, your income elasticity of demand will be positive in case of normal goods. Now, in case of inferior goods, which we have done earlier, what are inferior goods? Inferior goods are those goods which is a little bit inferior in quality, as the name itself says, right? And obviously, it is cheaper than the normal goods. The example that I gave you is ration shops, right? Wherein you get rice, you get pulses, you get oil, you get sugar at a very subsidized rate that has been provided by the government. But however, the quality is also a little bit inferior than compared to what you get in the normal, normal grocery sh stores, right? So what happens when the income of the person increases, then that person will stop consuming these inferior goods. They'll go on and purchase superior quality goods, right? So what happens in the case of inferior goods? When there is a rise in income, when there is a rise in income of the consumer, people will stop demanding these inferior goods. So the income effect will be what? Negative. Income elasticity of demand will be negative in case of inferior goods, all right? Now, say, for example, in case of luxuries. Now, luxuries are what? Those are those commodities which you demand when you have extra income, when you have surplus, after spending on your necessities, okay, whatever you need, whatever is left, you spend it on your luxuries, right? So in that case, what happens? Your elasticity of demand is greater than one in case of luxuries. Now, why is it greater than one? That is because when they, if there is an increase in income by 1%, then your increase in luxuries will be greater than 1%. Now, in case of necessities, say items like medicines or your uh, daily food supplies, which is very necessary for you to survive, right? So in that case, your income elasticity will be less than 1. If there is an increase or decrease in income by 1%, the increase in decrease will be less than 1%, okay? This is in case of your necessities. All right, now so we have discussed what? The income elasticity of demand. Now the other independent variable was what? Price of related goods, right? So there we would discuss, that would be known as your cross elasticity of demand, C-R-O-S-S. -S. Okay, this is not G, sorry, this is C, okay? C-R-O-S-S. -S. So we did income elasticity, now it's cross elasticity of demand. Hmm. Now, when we are doing cross-elasticity of demand, now, cross-elasticity of demand means the responsiveness or the change of demand due to the change in the related goods. Now, what kind of related goods are we talking about here? We are talking about complementary goods and we are talking about substitutes, right, which we, which we will deal step by step, okay? Now, in cross-elasticity of demand, let the definition be clear first. Cross-elasticity of demand means the percentage change in quantity demanded due to 1% change in its related goods. And related goods, as I told you, could be complementary goods or could be what? Substitutes. All right. Now, the definition. Now, if you look at this uh, formula, it is simple, more or less the same for the three concepts. There are just a few differences here. So in cross elasticity of demand also, your formula is percentage change in quantity demanded of, let's say X as one of the commodities, divided by percentage change in price of Y, okay? So here we have taken the commodity as X and PY is the price of commodity Y. So we have taken two commodities here, commodities here, one is commodity X and one is commodity Y, okay? We have taken two commodities, let me make it clear again. One is commodity X and the other one is what? Commodity Y, okay? Okay, so now, now let's let this commodity X and Y be substitutes. So first we are going to deal with commodities that are substitutes. Now substitutes are what? Do, these are those commodities. If we do not find one, then we can go ahead using the other one. Say for example, tea and coffee are perfect substitutes or Coca-Cola and Pepsi, those are also perfect substitutes, all right? Now what happens in the case of substitutes is, say for example, a bottle, a can of Pepsi costs you rupees 20 and a can of Coca-Cola also costs you rupees 20. But for any reason, okay, the price of Pepsi increases from 20 to how much? 25 rupees. Now, what is happening? Now, price of, say, Pepsi X, price of X is increasing from 20 to 25 rupees. So, therefore, your demand for X will what? Fall. Now, people, since Pepsi and Coca-Cola are very good substitutes, people will go ahead and consume Coca-Cola. So, therefore, the demand for Y will increase.
Is that clear? This can happen with tea and coffee also. When the price of Pepsi increased, people stopped the consumption of Pepsi and went to its better substitute or close substitute, which is Coca-Cola, and hence the demand for Coca-Cola rose. All right, this can happen in the case of tea and coffee also. So here, what is happening? Because of the rise in the price of X, what is happening? The demand for Y is rising. So we see a kind of a positive relation between the two. When this is rising, the other one is also rising. So here, your cross elasticity of demand will be what? Positive, okay? Now, let me go ahead here and do this for you. Percentage change in quantity demand, again the same thing. Delta X divided by X into 100. I'm not going to repeat this again. I hope you understand, all right? And delta price of Y divided by initial price Y multiplied by 100, okay? Now, when you go ahead and simplify it further, it becomes delta X divided by X divided by delta PY divided by PY, okay? You simplified further, delta X divided by uh, X multiplied by PY divided by delta PY. You go ahead and simplify it further, delta X divided by delta PY into PY divided by X, okay? So here, we, here also we see that PY and PX are positive. This can never be negative. Can price ever be negative? Can uh, the price of anything be minus, minus 10 rupees? Or can your consumption be ever negative? You consume minus 10 rotis today. Is it minus one roti today? That's not possible at all, right? So these are always positive. Now, the sign, the sign of cross elasticity demand depends upon delta X plus delta PY, okay? So let me come back to what I was teaching you right now. I was talking about substitutes. So what happens in the case of substitutes? If the price of X rises, then the demand for Y will rise, okay? In that case, we see that there is a positive. Elasticity of demand is positive in case of substitutes. Now let's talk about complementary goods. Now complementary goods are what? Are those goods which complete each other, which cannot do without each other. All right, they have to be used together. Like say car and petrol. These are what? Complementary goods. Or you can say car and diesel, but let's take the example of car and petrol. Okay, because car cannot run without fuel, right? So let's take fuel here as petrol, okay? Now what happens when the price of car rises? Now we are talking about complementary goods. When the price of your car, X is your car, is rising, then what will happen? Demand for your car will fall. Demand for car will fall, hence your demand for Y, that is your petrol, demand for petrol will also fall. So in this case, you see a kind of a negative relation, inverse relation. When the price of car is rising, the demand for petrol is falling. So here you can see that your cross elasticity of demand in case of complements is what? Negative, all right? So, but in case of goods that are not related to each other at all, like your blackboard and, uh, and, say, uh, and say a car or your bag, and the food that you eat. These are unrelated goods. So in that case, if the goods are not related at all, then there is zero. The elasticity or the cross elasticity of demand is zero, all right? So the, um, uh, the sign regarding whether it is positive, whether it is negative, it is very important. Why? Because it helps us to understand the relationship between different goods, whether it is a complementary good, whether it is a substitute good, okay? So we have discussed cross price elasticity of demand. Cross price elasticity of demand has been discussed. Now we'll come to the third concept or the last concept that is own price elasticity of demand. Okay, so there's a lot of algebraical works here. So you can do it together while you're listening or looking at the recording. And you need to do it when you are practicing it at home also, all right? Now, own price elasticity. Now, as the word itself says, own price elasticity means the responsiveness of change in demand due to the change in its own price, all right? The change in the quantity demanded of potatoes due to the change in the price of potatoes, all right? So own price, whenever there is a change in the own price. Now, the formula again would be the same, percentage change in quantity demanded, say the commodity I take is X. We're not dealing with Y right now, we're just dealing with X. In the pri in quantity demanded, uh, percentage change in quantity demanded of X divided by percentage change in 
price of x. All right. So here, what are we dealing with? We are, we are taking into consideration the change in quantity demanded of x, say if x is potatoes, with respect to the change in the price of x, that is change in the price of potatoes. What will happen when the price of potatoes will change? All right. Now, in this case, also, your formula will be delta x, that is the change in x, initial x multiplied by 100, the whole thing divided by delta px, price of x, divided by initial x multiplied by 100, okay? So we simplify further like the way we did it before, x multiplied by, uh, so we'll do it straight away, okay? Px, we won't go step by step since we've done it earlier also. When you do it, I would recommend you to do it step by step so that you don't confuse yourself. So since we've done it three times, I just uh, jumped into the second step. All right. Now, so here we get this equation, all right, mathematical derivation. And this will always be positive because price will always be positive and x will al al also always be positive. So the sign of own price elasticity depends upon delta x divided by delta py. Okay. Now, so after understanding this, what is the definition of own price elasticity of demand? It is same as the previous elasticity of demand. Now, own price elasticity of demand is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of X due to 1% change in the price of X. All right. Now, we are talking about own price elasticity of demand. That is the price of the commodity itself. Now, say, for example, if the demand curve is downward sloping, now, when is the demand curve downward sloping? Generally, in case of normal goods, right? So, if the demand curve is downward sloping, then your elasticity, own price elasticity, will be, will be, sorry, own price E, let me just write it at PX or EX also you can write, will be negative. Elasticity will be negative. It's going in the opposite direction. Now, if your demand curve is upward rising, then your income or own price elasticity of income will be what? Positive. Now, say, for example, your demand curve is parallel to the y-axis. This is a y-axis and this is a x-axis. X, y, y, x, okay? So this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. And you're marking price here. So now what is happening? Price is changing from one to two units, then is increasing to three units, then to four units, but your demand is stuck to three units. So what do you see here? There has been a considerable increase or a decrease in price, but is your demand changing? No, right? So in this case, what happens? Your own price elasticity is equal to zero. That is, it is inelastic. This happens in case of necessities or items that are which you use regularly, habituated items also, all right? And then next comes your elasticity of demand, which will be like this. This is Y, this is X and O. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So here what is happening? There has been no change in price. Price is remaining constant to three units, all right? But your quantity demanded is changing to it can either be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be four. So without any change in price, there has been a considerable change in the quantity demanded of X. So in this case, your elasticity will be equal to infinity. All right. So these are the different situations. So depending whether the demand curve is downward sloping, upward rising, parallel to the X axis, parallel to the Y axis, you can easily understand whether uh, uh, the, uh, you can easily understand the own price elasticity of demand, the sign of the own price elasticity of demand. All right. Now, <clears throat> before we do this, before I tell you the importance of the elasticity of demand, now let me quickly explain to you the factors affecting elasticity of demand, okay? Now, what are the factors on which the elasticity of demand depends upon, okay? Now, the first factor on which the elasticity of demand depends upon is the nature of the commodity. Now, it could either be necessity. We can broadly categorize commodities to luxuries, to necessities or items that we are habituated to, all right? So say, for example, if it is a luxury, then what happens? The elasticity of demand will be very high, all right? But if it is a necessity or items that you are habituated to, in that case, elasticity is very low or it is very inelastic. 
It can also be with regard to your uh, type of the commodity, whether it is durable or non-durable. In case of durable commodities, elasticity is very uh, low, but in case of non-durable commodities, elasticity would be very, it is generally elastic or elasticity is high. Now, if the commodity has many substitutes, all right, like Pepsi has Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Fanta, so in that case, your elasticity is high, but if it does not have close substitutes, then your elasticity will be low. All right? Now, if any commodity has a lot of alternate uses, then what happens? The elasticity is high again, but if it does not have much alternate uses, then the elasticity is low. All right? Now, it could also uh, be with regard to your, uh, the amount of uh, change in price. If the change in price is considerable, is very large, then in that case, elast it is in in elastic. But if the change in price is uh, not so much, it is relatively lesser, then the elasticity will be obviously less elastic. All right. So in this case, uh, there are various factors on which your uh, elasticity of a de demand depends upon. All right. Now, why do we study elasticity then? We studied income elasticity of demand. We studied cross price elasticity of demand. And we also studied own price elasticity of demand. The reason why we study elasticity of demand is because as producers, okay, it gives us a picture that whenever I want to change the price of my commodity, what will happen to my sales? How much will people react to the change in demand? Whether the people will cut down their demand totally or by how much percent will they cut down the demand? Will it affect my sales badly? So that is the reason why producers need to understand the concept of elasticity of demand. Similarly, when a government is levying taxes, indirect taxes on each and every commodity that you use is levied with taxes. And some of the commodities are so high because of high taxes, right? So in this case, it's a study to understand, okay, if I increase taxes, the prices of the goods will increase considerably. Will that affect demand to an extent of minimizing sales, hampering sales completely? Is it a good decision? So. In that case also, it gives, a, it gives a picture to the government whether should they increase taxes and by how much should they increase or levy the taxes, all right? So um, we have discussed uh, majorly the concept of elasticity, the third chapter to you. So I hope it is clear to you. If there's any questions, you can always drop it down, okay? Thank you.